For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Join Reverend Cynthia Forbes for the message of hope. Jesus says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news of salvation. Why would I choose to spend eternity in hell with the devil who is wreaking havoc in this world? To those who have given their, their time and their life over to him, I don't want to spend my time, my eternity with him. No way. And you should not want to do the same because it is forever and ever unending. Tune in for words of encouragement and hope in a life of Christ. Message of hope right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Father, I give you praise. I give you thanks. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for life and health and strength. I thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to share your word. Bless it to our hearts today in the name of Jesus. I come against all the plans of the enemy to snatch the word, to, to, to pollute your word this morning. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, sanitize with the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, open hearts and minds and spirits to receive your word. Bless it to their hearts. Cause someone, oh God, somewhere to come to, to, to the knowledge of the truth, to come to receive Jesus Christ as personal savior as the days are counting down. Uh, 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 bringing, in, uh, bringing forward your, your soon coming, my God, to take the church away. Father God, just have your way today. Minister in every heart, every home, every life, my God, in the name of Jesus. Minister to those who perform their duties on this platform, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless TIN, bless the ministers that minister from, from this platform in the name of Jesus. Oh God, expand us, pray for expansion, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, just have your way today. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Let me take this opportunity to welcome one and all <laughs> to the message of hope. Amen. Wherever you are, wherever you may be, whatever you may doing, be doing at this time, take time out to listen to the word of God. Yes, message of hope, bringing hope to the hopeless. Hallelujah. Tune in. Tune in to the Lord Jesus Christ. Tune in to the Spirit of God. Let Him minister to you. Yes, let Him bring life and vigor and health and strength and revival, restoration, life, and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. We are going to the Word of God now. Last time we were together, we looked into the book of Philippians, chapter 1. We read from verse 1 to to about eight, but we're just going to focus on verse six today. Amen. Verse six reads, being confident, hallelujah, the apostle Paul writing to the Philippians and writing also to us. Hallelujah. Being, very, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work, hallelujah, a good work, hallelujah, in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Being confident, the Apostle Paul speaking to the, to the Philippians then, to the church at Philippi, to the believers at Philippi, individual believers at Philippi. And also he's speaking to us today the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today, the local assembly, hallelujah, wherever you are located, and, to, and speaking to individual believer, because he is working a good work in all of our lives. And if he's not working in your life, as a matter of fact, as an unbeliever, those of you who have not come to uh, surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he's working. He's using all kinds of situations to get your attention, to get you to turn from sin and turn to him. So he's working in your life as well. All kinds of situations he's using to get your attention. And he's working in the lives of the believer. Paul starts off by saying, 
uh, let me say it like, I am confident. <laughs> let me say it like in our language. I am confident, Paul is saying. And confident, what does confident mean? Yes, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Beyond a, sh I'm not guessing here. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know for sure. You see, Paul had a real encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. Something really, really happened to him. And not only so, he, told, he said in one of the, um, his epistles that he was caught. No, he didn't call his name, but we know he was referring to himself. He was caught up and he saw things and he heard things that he couldn't talk about. So, so Paul wasn't second guessing anything about the things of God. He wasn't second guessing anything about God and his plans and Jesus Christ and what he, he, he's doing and what he intends to do and what he will do in our lives and for us. So he's saying, I am confident brethren. Are you confident? Are we confident about our God, the same God we serve? Yet sometimes things will come to shake our faith in God. The enemy <clears throat> will also come and bring up our past and, and tell us uh, things like, look at what you do, you, you say you are saved, you're not saved. If you were saved, you wouldn't do that. If you are really Christian, you wouldn't do that. Remember, it, it came to Jesus Christ, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, he will come to us with those, but we have to be confident. We have to be fully persuaded. Hallelujah. We must know for sure, as Paul said, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. And God is able. He's more than able. Hallelujah. He's more than able. I am confident, Paul says, beyond a shadow of a doubt. How confident are we? When we read the word, and do we believe that this word is going to work for us if we put it to work? Do we, do we believe? Do we really, really believe? Here Paul is saying, I am confident that that which God has begun in the Philippians, he's able. He's able. That which he began, the work, and he's working, you know. The song, somebody sang something saying, even if we don't feel that he's working, he'll never stop. He never stopped. He's still working. And it's a good work because God is a good God. Even though some people think otherwise, when they look at what is going on around the world or even what may be happening to them, they may ask the question, if God's so good, why? Why this and why that? If God's so loving, why am I going through all of this? Hello? That's your choice. You choose to stay that way because God provided for us a way, the way out of our troubles, the way out of our sin, the way out of our whatever you may be going through. He provided that way through his son, Jesus Christ. The world has rejected him. Most partly, part most of the world has rejected him and his his salvation plan to get you and get us all out of sin. Sin is the problem. Sin is the problem. Hallelujah. I am confident, Paul says, that he who has begun a good work, a good work, God is a good God. At creation, Everything that God made, he looked at it and he said, it was good. And when it was finished, he looked at all that he had created, all his work that he had done. And he said, it was very good, very good, very good. And when Jesus came on the scene, the Bible says, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Hallelujah. The work in your life and the work in my life that God is doing is a good work. We just have to cooperate. Sometimes we may resist it, you know. We may resist the work that he's doing because it causes pain. Sometimes it causes pain and a pressure. You know, it makes me think of, hallelujah, the goldsmith. Hallelujah, putting the piece, the, this rough piece of diamond in, 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 the, in, the, in the fire. Hallelujah, it goes through the fire. Refiner's fire. 
Holy Ghost fire is a refiner's fire to refine us, to get the sin out, to get the, 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 the dross out. Hallelujah. To get all that is, is that we don't need to be in our lives. So when he puts it in, he would take it out and look at it, polish it and so on. It, it's not up to standard. He would put it back again. It is said that unless he can see the reflection of his face in that thing, it's not good yet. It goes back into the fire. And we have to reflect Christ. And he will work on us. We'll have to go back into the fire. He will put us back in the fire. He will allow us to go back into the fire. To be tried. And to be tested. Hallelujah. To get the muck and the mire and the bad mind and the malice and the bitterness and the anger and the hatred. To get all out from us until we can reflect. Christ. That is the, that's the whole point. Till we come into the maturity and into the image of Christ. That's the whole point. And it's, it's not finished. The refiner's fire. Hallelujah. One scripture tells us uh, when we go to, not if you know, when we go to the fire, the flood and the waters. Hallelujah. Fire, we're not, we, we're not going to be burnt out. Because he's there with us. He's working on us. It's a good work. Hallelujah. Paul says, I am confident. I am confident of this thing. The one and it is God who has begun it and he will finish it. He finishes what he begins. The author and the finisher. The alpha and the omega. The first and the last. Hallelujah. Job, said, Job says, when I am tried, a part of that verse, when he would have tried me, he said, when you try me, I shall come forth as gold. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall come forth. There's a reason why we go through. Sometimes I learned that the hard way. You know, sometimes we ask the question, well, why me? So why not you? <laughs> why not you? Why me? Why am I going through this? It is God doing his refining. He's doing his refining in us. Hallelujah. All we have to do, submit and go through the process. He's with us as we go through the process. Don't think he, was, he would leave us alone. We got to remember whose we are. <laughs> and let's go through. It's, it could be hard. Jesus says, I, I am the true vine and my father is the husband. Man, listen, he said, we are branches. <laughs> Every branch that does not bear, it's going to cut off, cut off, cut off. So there's always a cutting away. There's also always a working. There's always, Jesus Christ, they're always working on us. Working. There's a cutting away. There's a mulching. There's a chipping away. Yes, getting rid of unnecessary baggage <laughs> from our lives. There's always that. There will always be work. He's always working on us. Think of, we, we are like, uh, we, we should be like uh, the clay in the potter's hand. Come on, come on. So he can mold us. Uh, I mean, that molding, I mean, that, that molding and that pressure on, in, on, the, on the clay. That pressure, yes? And that turning and turning and, 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 and in Jeremiah it says, uh, like it says there, uh, and, the, and the vessel was mad in the, in the master's hand, in the potter's hand. Yeah, that's a good place to be mad in because he knows how to fix it. He knows how to fix it. That which is broken, he can fix it. That which is discarded, he can. That which is rejected, he will take it up and put it and make it useful, yes? For his, for his use, for his use, yes. Oh my God, my God. Paul says, I am confident. How confident are you? We have to build our confidence up in our God. We do that by going into the word. This is where we get our confidence in God. His word will never lie. He, he backs his word. He says, I watch over my word to perform it, to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. His word is true. His word is true. We got to trust him, trust his word, trust his working in our lives. Hallelujah. It could be tough. It could be hard. It could be harsh. Yes. Think of Jesus he, he, in, in his earthly father's workshop. <laughs> the workshop. 
We are, you know, long ago, uh, those, those men would have a bench where they do the carpentry, uh, the bench, and they have the saw, and they have the hammer, and they have the nails, and they have the chisel, and they have the jack plane to smooth that word. Yes, to smooth it, to take off all the rough edges because they want a, a very finished product. <laughs> a very finished product with no flaws. Hallelujah. So they work on it and they work on it and they look at it to see if it's straight. And if it's not straight, they put the, the measuring rule against it or the plumb line against it and to get it straight, to get it level. God is working in our lives. He's working on us. He's working on us. He, Paul says it will go on until the day of Christ. He will perform that work. Do not resist. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> it is never easy under the pressure of the molding and the squeezing of the potter's hand. It's not easy being put in the fire. It's not easy, but he's there with us to refine us. Hallelujah. He knows if what the finished product would like, what he wants. He, know, he knows what he wants. He, he knows what the finished product will look like. So he's working on us. All the trials and all the testings and all those things that come upon us. Uh, come on, hear what uh, Romans 8, 38 says. Listen, all things, <laughs> all things work together for good. Sometimes you wonder for good? What is good in this? God's working it. God works all things. When the scripture says all things work together, it's not just willy-nilly, any old how no, it's just vikey vi. No. God is at work. God is working all things together for our good. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. Hallelujah. He's working it. It's a good work because we are serving a good God. It is a good God who saved us. Hallelujah. I'm saying, although others may think otherwise. That is not good because so many bad things are happening. Yes, and those same bad things that are happening, he's aware. But he's waiting on people to turn to him so he could change this, their situation. But people want to have their own way. See, uh, in, in Isaiah we are told, all we like sheep have turned every man to his own way. Own way, we like we own way. We like to have we own way. You know, long ago, <laughs> we would get some punishment. And one of the things my mother would say, Oh, I like all your own way too much. Plow, plow, plow. Oh, I like all because we go on. She doesn't know where we went. We went with friends, gone playing here, going playing there. So when we return, we will get the trashing. Because she didn't know where we went. And she would trash us and as uh, while the trashing is going on only like only own way too much only own way too much only own way too much yes to bring us back in line we c we would never do that again we wouldn't do it no so 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 the things that come upon us as believers as children of god do not be surprised um, james says think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that will try us Come on. Yes, as people of God, as children of God, Jesus said, in this life we will have tribulation. So expect it. <laughs> expect it. Tribulation, trials, testing will come to us. But he is with us. He will allow them. Listen, he could have just saved us and take us out, you know. When he saved us, he could have, okay, let me take you all up. To, no, there's a process. That we have to be here as salt and light. Hallelujah. We have to stay here on earth as salt and light and as a witness of the power of God. Hallelujah. We have to stay here and be God's witnesses. Hallelujah. Of his mighty saving power to save souls, to save the lost. And to save some of us from ourselves. Because we had and we like to go our own way and do our own thing, even as believers. We got to go God's way. We got to go God's way. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy 
and my burden. Imagine a burden should be something heavy. He says, what I'm going to put on you, the burden I'm going to put on you is light. The burden the world and the devil will put on us is heavy. When Christian was going up the mountain, he was going with all his, his burden on his shoulder, heavy weight, weight of sin, weight of the world on his shoulders. When he got to the top, ah, it was released. When, when, when that burden of sin is rolled away from your life, from your heart, there's a freedom that comes, uh, there's a lightness that comes that you cannot, words cannot express. Hallelujah, free, free, free. I have been set free, hallelujah, by that man of Galilee. Would you want to be free to this? You who have not as yet known Jesus Christ as personal savior and Lord, he's working in your life as well. He's allowing circumstances, certain kinds of circumstances, certain things to happen to get your attention. But mm -mm, you don't want God. Some people just don't want, they tell you plain, me I want no God, I don't believe in God, I don't, I don't, don't tell me about no God. And the reason, because of what is happening in the world and what is happening to them and what is happening around them. God is a good God. Hallelujah. He's doing a good work. A good, good, good work by a good, good, good God. Let us cooperate with him. Do not resist. Hallelujah. Let's go through the process. He's doing a good work and it's going to continue until Jesus Christ comes. So brace yourself. <laughs> Apply the blood. Get empowered by the Holy Spirit. So when, when, when the, 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 the things come, we'll be able to stand. Amen. We'll be able to stand. We'll be able to go through. The, his grace is sufficient. His grace is enough to take us through whatever comes our way. I am confident, Paul says. How confident are you? How confident are we? Hallelujah. That, that which God has begun. He's able. He's more than able. Hallelujah. He's more than able now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are, can ask or think. Come on. We're not serving a weak God. <laughs> He's more than able. Hallelujah. All powerful, omnipotent. Hallelujah. To bear our burden. Come on. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am confident says Paul, that God who has begun a good work, sometimes it doesn't seem like good, <laughs> but like the word of God says, he, he works all things, all things together for our good, for our good. And there are reasons why we go through. Hallelujah. Jesus is the master builder. He says, I will build my church. And the believers, the called out ones, that's the church. I will build. And listen, any construction business, <laughs> any building of any structure, we are God's building, yes? Hallelujah. You have the material, the types of material for the kind of building you are going to build. And the varying types of tools. <laughs> And God will use whatever tool he chooses to work in our lives according to what he has to deal with in our lives. Yes, to bring us to that place he would have us to be. Remember, he's coming for a church without spot, without wrinkle. <laughs> so he's getting the spots out as he works on us. He's getting the wrinkles out as he works on us. Allow him to work. The what? Allow him. Allow him. Let us allow him to work. It's for our good. Let us not resist. Let us not rebel. Let us submit our lives to him as we go through. He's working all things for our good. Paul says, I am confident. And I, I am confident. I am confident. If you want to know if God worked in your life, look back. Look back at where you were before you got saved. And look at after you have been saved, where you are. 
how your life is. You didn't do it. God secretly behind the scenes worked on us. Behind the scenes, we didn't do it. We have no credit. All the glory goes to God. Look back at where you were, where I was, what you used to do or what we used to do, how we lived and where we are now. Hallelujah. It, it's all God's working on us to bring us to this place where we are and he will continue to work to take us to that position, to that place where we ought to be. Hallelujah. Paul says, I'm confident, telling the Philippians, and he's telling us today that he's confident. The word is of God says, God is going to perform it. He's going to, going to, he's going to perfect that which concerns us. He's going to perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's trust him in the process. <laughs> Let's trust him. Trust and obey, trust and obey, trust and obey. Let's trust him as he works on us. Let's submit to him as he works on us. Let's go through the process. He's with us. His grace is sufficient to take us through whatever the process might be. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Confident. Be confident. Trust God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think. Amen. So wherever you are today, if you have not yet, as yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, today is a good day. It's raining across the nations. Yes, but the Son of God will keep you warm warm with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Today's a good day to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, right where you are, why not bow your heart? Bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And give him, ask him to forgive you. You, you speak it just as you would talk to your friends, tell your friends all your, your stories. Talk to Jesus. He's, he's listening. Hallelujah. Tell him all about your troubles. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you with his precious blood. Ask him to make you his child. And you promise to live for him. He will give you the grace and he will give you the strength. Hello, don't tell yourself you can't make it. None of us could. We need Jesus. All of us need Jesus to make it in this life, in this Christian life, this Christian walk. We need Jesus as we go every day of our lives. God bless you as you continue to view the message of hope every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. on TIN. God bless this, this network and bless those who work here. Bless you, bless your family, bless your marriage, bless your children, bless your business. God continue to bless our nation. See you next time. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Join Reverend Cynthia Forbes for the message of hope. Jesus says to so go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news of salvation. Why would I choose to spend eternity in hell with the devil who is wreaking havoc in this world? To those who have given their, their time and their life over to him. I don't want to spend my time, my eternity with him. No way. And you should not want to do the same. Because it is forever and ever unending. Tune in for words of encouragement and hope in a life of Christ. Message of hope right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network. Every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m.